Hello and welcome to Field Notes. Recently I took a trip to the Field Museum, one of the largest and coolest natural history museums in the world. And if you've ever been to the Field Museum, you know that one of the biggest attractions is Sue. Sue is a fossil. Well, a cast of a fossil. But how does something become a fossil? And that's something that we're going to be talking about today. Kind of a broad definition of a fossil is something that has been preserved. And this can occur several different ways and be presented in kind of four main ways. First we have mold fossils and these are fossilized impressions. For whatever reason, what made the mold is no longer present, but you do still have the hollow space that it occupied. Cast fossils are similarly made. Instead of there being that hollow space, it is filled in and duplicated the shape of whatever made the mold. Then we have trace fossils, and these are trace remains of an organism. These can be burrows from animals, nests, or even footprints. Some of the most famous trace fossils are actually dinosaur footprints, and we can learn a ton about different types of dinosaurs from their footprints. Finally, we have true form fossils, and this is where actual animal or plant bits have been preserved. You don't just have a mold or a cast or a trace of them. So what determines what will make a fossil? Well, one thing that we have to keep in mind is preservation bias. If you've been a long-time viewer, then hello. Also, you will remember us talking about this before. Preservation bias is how likely something is to be preserved. Hardier things are more likely to stick around, as are things that are in abundance. If you think about that, the more of something there is, the more likely it is that the odds are going to be in its favor. After we take into account preservation bias, there are a few ways that things will become fossilized. First, we have unaltered preservation. Unaltered preservation is where something doesn't change at all. This happens when we get bugs trapped in amber, but another famous incident is from the La Brea Tar Pits, where we had saber-toothed cats that basically were completely unaltered when we found them. Next we have permineralization or petrification. What that means is that whatever made up the organism has been replaced by a mineral. Petrified wood is a really good example of this, as are most bone fossils. Permineralization or petrification can happen to both hard and soft material. Replacement is another method in which something will become a fossil. As the name suggests, this is where one mineral is replaced by another. It's important to note that if a material disintegrates first and is then replaced, we then have a cast fossil. Next we have carbonization. This is when everything else has been removed except for carbon, and you're left with just a hunk of carbon which is what coal is. And finally, we have recrystallization. This is a fossil where minerals have reverted back to a more stable form or have joined together with other crystals to form even larger crystals. At the base of fossilization, there is a list of things that need to happen. A part of an animal or a plant or an object falls. It is then covered up very quickly. If it is not covered up, then a lot of what could be preserved will be lost either due to animal activity or just simple decay. So next time you're standing in front of a fossil, think Think about all of the different things that needed to line up to get it to that museum, or to that display, or to that side of the road where you found it. Think about what kind of fossil it is. Is it a cast of something? Is it a bug preserved in amber? What kind of fossil is it? I hope this has been helpful in determining what kind of fossils are what. What have been some of your favorite fossils? I've made a video about two of my favorite uh, fossilized things. Tell me down below what some of your favorites are. Remember to hit like if you like this video, subscribe if you would like to see more, and I will see you guys next time. By the way, I wanted to talk about this here in, in the end card, in case you've stuck around. I've seen that there is a very high percentage of my external views coming from Kent University. So if you are from Kent University, or a teacher has sent you here, that is so cool to me. And I wanted to say thank you to whoever put me on whatever school website is clicking on me. So that is like, that's like super, super cool for me. So I'm, I really hope that you guys are sticking around. If you did see, if you did just come from class, maybe you thought you'd learn a couple more things. So if you are from that class, let me know down below, because that would be so cool for me to know. Also, I've been participating in Vita. So far, I have uh, done every single day. It is only day 11, so we will see how that goes. But if you would like to see what I kind of get up to in my day-to-day -day life, there's a lot about how I make these videos, a lot about how what I'm using for the videos and that sort of thing. So if that's at all interesting for you guys, be sure to click over. I will put a little, I'll put a link here in this box and I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye.